Hey, what's up you guys? This is Gabriel Vision Tune Lament and you tuned in to your channel, Vision Tune Art World. I'm really happy that you decided to go ahead and check this video out because in this video, I will be coloring the mean green man himself, the Hulk. The Hulk has always been one of my favorites within the Marvel Universe. We've seen him in different ways. We've seen different types of styles of the Hulk. And so I'm really excited to be able to share with you the whole entire guide of how I was able to take one of my drawings that I inked and scanned in, and then I brought in the Photoshop to do some fun coloring with. So, before we get into this video, I do want to ask that you go ahead and hit a subscribe on this channel, as well as go ahead and click that bell so you can get notifications of whenever I have something brand new coming out on the channel, because I'm trying to make sure that I do about two or three different styles of video per week, and so I think there's going to be a lot of stuff that you guys are going to really enjoy. Also, I can be found on social media. I can be found on Facebook. All you have to do is look up the name Gabriel Lamette. Or if you're on Instagram, go ahead and look up Gabriel underscore Vision Tune underscore Lamet, and that will get you connected to some of the different things that I do. So, without further ado, thank you guys for joining me, and let's get into this video and Hulk out. All right, here we go, everybody. We're about to go ahead and get into coloring my man, the Hulk, in Photoshop. And we're going to have a lot of fun with this right now because there's a lot of ways that we're going to get into doing this. And the first one that we're going to get into is just general standard coloring um, and using bevel techniques within Photoshop. And then I'm going to go ahead and look to get into uh, actually using my digital pen to be able to do some... Uh, line work within this drawing as well. This is one of the drawings that I did the other day and um, this is something that I was really looking forward to being able to do with you guys since I established this channel. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into coloring my man the Hulk. So one thing that I am doing here is as before I'm creating new layers um, to be able to make sure that everything is labeled properly as I go in to start to do my work. So I'm gonna start with the skin first. The color uh, that I have it set on as far as the mode is actually CMYK, which is for being able to print it. It's not that I'm gonna to look to print it probably at any point, but I like the fact that if I color something within um, CMYK, I can print it and not have to really worry about much challenges with the actual colors themselves versus if I do it in RGB and then move it to CMYK, um, those colors will definitely generally change and manipulate or not be as bright and vibrant. So I wanna try and make sure I design this as vibrant as possible in CMYK because if I go to CMYK uh, to RGB, the color's not going to get dull on me. It generally will stay exactly the same. So, all right, so let me go ahead and start out. And as we've done before, we go ahead and select the magic wand tool over here. And that's allowed me to select his whole entire body. And then I'm gonna go up here and select a color that I think would work rather well. So now that I've gotten a color I think would work really good for his skin and I can manipulate this at any time, then I'll go ahead and fill this layer that's right here to the green that we're looking to do. Now, uh, let me go ahead and also grab his face right here and do the exact same thing and put that on that level. Uh, got one white nipple sitting here which does not work so let me go ahead and uh, go ahead and select that there we go now I've been able to make that green and then what I do is go down to his feet and select them both and if you want to be able to select both within Photoshop I use the magic wand tool and click that and I'm using a PC so I held shift and I went ahead and selected his other foot and clicked it so that allowed me to be able to take them both at the same time. So we've already got at least his coloring kind of set in the place of what we're doing and then the next thing will be to go ahead and establish another layer and I'll call this pants. If I can spell correctly, there we go. <laughs> so um, now we've got his pants already set for his layer. Then we go into the template itself again. 
we'll select both by again holding down that shift key to select them both and then I'm going to go in and pick a purple because um, this is kind of the classic Hulk a little bit um, I'm really into the classic style of um, characters as you guys probably already know it's kind of a fun old school nostalgia to doing what we do now uh, one thing that I am noticing right away is part of his leg didn't get colored in and so as you go through and you do these things you'll start to realize that there are things that you've forgotten so let me start off by going in here and clicking this area here I'm not really concerned about that here but let me go ahead and click there fill that to the purple for his pants and then go back into the template select that go here to pick that green again so all I've done is click down here on the foreground color and then I can go ahead and select that exact same green so everything stays consistent go to that layer and then fill that to green now he is completely completely there all right Ooh, and I see one more go in again uh, hit the foreground color there select the purple then go back to the template select this portion right up in there then go back to his pants layer fill it there and then as I've said a thousand times before save 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 that's only going to be your friend if you do that trust me when I say that to you all right so now we're going to go ahead and get into his hair now with the classic Hulk his hair was kind of black but it also started to have a little bit of green to it I felt so I'm gonna pick like a good medium in between the black and the green um, to be able to kind of fill his hair to that and then so what I'll do after that now that I've selected the green that I want then I'll go ahead and create the layer and just simply call it hair and from there I go ahead and click on the template layer grab his hair grab his eyebrows since that is hair too and then I go ahead and I fill it to that see so now we've kind of gotten the dark green hair going there and then again we'll go ahead and save so the next thing that I'll do is go ahead and select his toenails and go on through here man he's got some big huge feet probably make Shaq's feet look like a kindergartner's foot um, all right and then so we will go ahead and say toenails and then um, I'll make it just a little bit of a lighter green than I did than the actual hair for him itself and then go ahead and select all of his nails with with what is within our template and from there go ahead and fill that toenail layer and now he's got uh, nice dark green nails for him all right now we're gonna go in and start to pull the things for his face and again go ahead and save again now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cheat a little bit here which is always a good thing when it comes down to being able to move fast and efficiently I've selected his teeth and the whites of his eyes Oop, too much so let me zoom in so I can get that actual white there we go all right then I'll go in and create that new layer and I'm gonna say T and eyes and then fill that to white then from there I'm going to go ahead and select his actual eyes and I will make his eyes the same dark green that I did for his hair so let me go ahead I've selected the color uh, choosing tool here and that's the eyedrop tool so I give you the exact name of it and so I've selected that same green of his hair and then now I'm going to create another layer and call that eyeball 
and then go ahead and fill that to that dark green as well. Now, the next thing I'll do is I'm going to go ahead and select the inner portion of his mouth. And I'm going to go, uh, because there's three um, layers to his mouth, I'm going to go ahead and start with um, selecting the back of his throat. So let me go ahead and select that from the template. And I'm going to put back throat. If I can ever spell correctly. There we go. All right. And so what I'm going to do is go really dark for the back of his throat, um, like a darker reddish pink and I'm gonna fill that to that color. Then I'm gonna go ahead and make another layer and I'm gonna put inner mouth. That'll be what I named that one. Go back to my template, select his inner mouth. And let me go ahead and fill that because I already see a dot that showed up in the scan. All right, so then I can go on from here, pick from that color and then let it get lighter. And so now that is set and then last but not least the forefront of the inside of his mouth which would be his tongue go ahead make my layer and then choose from the color and go a little bit brighter and make his tongue even brighter than the rest so we've got a um, a color change so it goes bright dark darkest so now that we're here kind of looks like a five-year-old's drawing of the Hulk well, I don't know if five-year-olds are gonna draw it like this but you know what I mean it's not all the way there yet so now is where we start to get into some of the fun of being able to do this which is going in and starting our effect on beveling his green hulking skin so I've already gone into the layer here and I'm going to kind of pick a dark green to be my shadow of his bevel and then I'm going to do a linear dodge uh, for his highlight um, of his skin and as you can see there's a lot more needing to be done here and so I'm going to go with our first gloss contour which is kind of a half and half type of deal and I'm going to turn the depth down quite a bit and then move the size up too. So you see how if I'm manipulating it it's kind of doing a funky thing there that is not going to give us what we're actually looking for but that's the fun of being able to play around with what we're doing here. And so for in this case of playing around with it, mess with the depth a little bit more. And some of you may be like, okay, that doesn't look good at all, Gabriel. Actually, when I'm all said and done with this, this is going to look fantastic. So I'm going to mess with the softness a bit, turn that up quite a bit, and then start to pull back the opacity of my multiplied layer of the bevel. So if I do it all the way up, he looks like that. That's not what we want. Um, and so what I can do is go in, kind of pull that back a little bit, then pull back his highlight just a little bit too. So now this becomes bearable to look at and see. Then from there, go in and establish what my stroke is going to be. And now you're going, oh wow, okay. Now this is starting to come together. It doesn't look crazy as heck anymore, man. So I'm picking a dark green, to kind of be able to work with and I'm increasing the size of the stroke on this so it's on the inside there we go that is something I feel to be a bit more manageable I'm just gonna zoom in so you guys can see what I've done here so that the inner highlight I can go brighter as you can see but I don't need to go as bright and I'm able to get him to settle in at looking like that 
So, as you can see, now he's starting to kind of really take on his hulkish look, which is what we definitely want within this drawing. So, from here, then we'll go ahead and do the exact same thing for the pants, but let me save first. All right, now that we've done that, now what I like to do is cheat a little bit, and this is where you can cut down on time, is you go in and you um, can right click your layer and do the adjustment that's called copy layer style, click on the pants layer, and then paste it and so you'll right click that layer and do paste layer style and so it's already done some of the work for you and all you'll end up having to do at that point is go on in and start to manipulate the stuff to make it really be what you want it to be so I'm going in changing the multiply from it being a green to it being a purple um, I'm going to mess with the size on this a little bit more so we get a bit more of the details of the bevel for the lines that are there. Let me see, messing around with the direction so I've made it go down instead of up within the layers. And then adjusting the actual stroke on it for it to be a purple. You can see now we're coming together or as my wife would say, now we're cooking with gasoline. All right, I promise you we don't blow stuff up here, okay? Uh, but she says that. Anyway, so now we've got that already set in and now the hook is really starting to kind of come to life. Now the next thing we'll do is work with my man's toenails here. And this is the closest I get to toenails because I don't mess with feet in real life. But um, here we go. So we've gotten this together so now I've gone in and I'm adjusting my bevel and emboss on it so we just get a little bit of a glare to it and that's all I'm really going to want to achieve out of just at least that portion of it then go in and mess with the stroke and obviously he wouldn't have a purple stroke to it you'll have more of a green and I want to make it just a little bit visible, not too much or too crazy. So I'm going to turn the size down to maybe a three on that. So then now we've got it with a bit of highlight. And again, go ahead and save. I will always say that to you. Now let's go ahead and mess with my guy's hair here. So now what we're going to do is go ahead and mess with the bevel on that. And I didn't copy and paste this one because it's going to be quite different. Um, so I'm messing with the size on it a bit. I'm going to soften it a lot more and then turn up the linear dodge on this a little bit so we get more of a texture base to it and then even mess with the multiply effect on it which is in your shadow mode of the bevel and then go in and mess with his stroke and I don't want it neon looking like that maybe something I turned it down as you could see there so now you get just a little bit of the effect of his hair So now we can go ahead and just save what we've done. And then now I'm going to go ahead and mess with his eyes. Let's see here. And I'll go ahead and work with the teeth and eyes layer, both of those that work together. So I've done the bevel there, so it gives just a little bit of a gray shadowing to it right in this area as well as within the eye and then I go ahead and fill the stroke and turn it down so it's not going to be too big on him but I've turned it down to about a two and then I'm manipulating the color itself so it just shows up just a tad bit I, I don't want to go too crazy on how this is going to be now the next thing is to go ahead and work with his eyeball itself so I've selected that layer gone into the bevel itself I'm turning up the uh, 
highlight mode of the linear dot so it gives its own natural eye glare. I'm going to play around with this a little bit to make the direction go up instead of it being down. And then I'm going to go in and mess with the stroke on it and turn that all the way down to one because his eyes are pretty small and delicate and I don't want it to look too weird. And so now, as you can see, there's just a slight bit of a highlight that you're getting right within that area. And I turned it back up to two now that I see what the color is going to look like as it plays through. Again, go ahead and save your drawing. And then from here, we're going to go ahead and start to work on the mouth layers itself. So we'll go ahead and start with his tongue and we'll go into our layer style and mess with the bevel on it. Um, go ahead and adjust the shadow mode of the bevel so it's going to play a little bit of a hint of purple and then highlighting it more with the linear dodge, then converting over to your stroke within the layer style and giving it a more complementary color than the green obviously that's showing up there and there we go and then let me see what happens when I turn this up see so that's too much so just give it just a little bit there we go then again go ahead and save <clears throat> then from here you'll go ahead and go in and look to work with his inner mouth go ahead and go to the layer style mess with the bevel itself change the direction so you can make sure that that makes sense for what you're doing. I've uh, increased the softness on it and turned the size down just a tad bit. And then now I'm going into the strokes of my layer style itself and I'm going to work with the color of the stroke so I can hopefully get it close enough to what I'm looking for and I think that'll do it. And what that's kind of coming in at is more so of a purple stroke and outline. And then the last piece to the bevel puzzle is going in and working with the um, back of his throat. So I'll mess with the bevel there and turn up the shadows in that quite a bit and then go into the stroke of the layer style and not allow it to be as bright as that but maybe bring it down so it's just a subtle subtle outlining of a stroke color on the inside of his back throat and here we are for the first portion of the hulk himself and so the next thing that i'll be working on for this will actually be the line art portion of it. Alright, so let's go on to our next phase. Alright, so now we're going to go ahead and get into doing a bit more of the details and I'm going to be using one of my uh, digital drawing pens. The pen style that I, uh, or brand that I use is the XP pen. Um, this is one that I found on Amazon. It didn't run me that much, uh, but it's been very effective and I've really enjoyed being able to uh, take my art to another level by being able to do line work within Photoshop itself. And so just as I've done before, I'm going to go in, create my new layer, and I'm going to go ahead and label that. Um, we'll just call it lines. And then go ahead and look to set what I'm going to have. And so what I've done is selected the pencil tool and I've got it at about a number three um, up here for how big the actual pencil is. And then what I'm going to do is I already have my color set to it being black. And then I go and select the property of what this entire lines layer is going to be which is I've made it a multiplied layer. When you do multiplied layers on um, your colors that you're working with, it makes it go dark and it goes like true black almost to a certain extent. So what we'll do is now I'm going to go ahead and get into doing a little bit of line work going in here. So 
let me go ahead and start in here. Now, one of the things that I've always appreciated being able to do with line work is um, when you're working on the computer, if you see that you're starting something that is not what you're really wanting it to be, it's real easy because all you have to do is go in, select the whole entire area, and then go ahead and delete it, and then resume. back in make a new layer make it a multiplied layer alright so let's have at this again so now I'm able to add more of the detail of what I'm looking to achieve here with this artwork piece. And when you're starting out doing your line work within Photoshop um, and you're using a pen tool of any kind, Sometimes you're going to find that what you're doing doesn't work or you'll find out that it does work and that's where your layers are going to be very 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 crucial in what you're looking to do here because if you again if you don't like the way a certain thing is starting to form then you can just simply go in use your um, your lasso tool or something like that and just delete a certain part of what you're doing and then start to redo just that portion again by itself but I like where this is starting to go so I think I can live with how the designs are going as far as our line work here So you're able to get a lot of details by using a pen tool that per se if you were to be drawing something and then you ink it and then scan it it will be a pain in the butt or at least it is for me I feel when I have to go in and try and color something and I've got a lot of cross you know cross hatching type of lines going and it doesn't take all of it going in afterwards for me has been an amazing, amazing benefit of having a pen tool. And it makes it easy um, when you're doing like comic book style artwork for you to color it, you know, and then go in and do your detail work with a pen tool. And I've always liked this um, style of inking in, which is kind of scribbling, as you can kind of see um, how this all starts to form and pull itself together and do all the things that I'm looking to do for the details. I make lines and then I do a lot of scribbling to it. And that's just my style of doing ink work. Some people have many different styles that they work with, but this is mine of choice. And as you see, you're starting to get more details in all of this. Fill that in a little bit. So he's got inner nostrils. Let's see. And then just giving him a little bit more detail to where his hair falls into place. And see, it's all starting to really develop itself rather nicely, I feel. And I hope you feel the same way too. 
going in to kind of fill in his nipple just a little bit. There we go. And then I'm going to start working on the details of his arm just a bit more now. There we go. And doing the artwork in Photoshop, it literally becomes a combination of different uh, steps that you're going to be taking as you do this. Because literally, I've already shown you just simple coloring within Photoshop itself. But then, as you see now, I'm working with the pen tool. And then before you know it, or not the pen tool, but the pencil tool. But then before you know it, then I'll be going back to using my mouse to go ahead and actually airbrush certain areas of this so that shadows become a bit more true to what we're looking to do here. Now, one thing I do want to say is uh, one of the next drawings I'm going to be looking to do and do a tutorial on is going to be drawing Iron Man and I really want you guys to tune in for that one because that one's going to be a lot of fun because I'll be doing more of um, obviously metallic style um, effects to it with the bevel so for those who are Iron Man fans you want to tune in for those who want to know a little bit about being able to um, pull things together in Photoshop to give that chrome Ish style effect uh, you're definitely not going to want to miss that and just as a little FYI of background I came from back in the days of doing graphic design for like the Master P days I know some of the people that are like 18 they're like who the heck is Master P look them up but uh, Master P everything was like chromed and uh, some of the effects were terrible in a good way because they kind of set the tone and trend for design back then well, yours truly was doing designs like that back in those days, back in the uh, 90s and things like that. And um, so I've had a lot of experience with doing chromatic effects on things. And so I'll be showing you guys some of those when I do the Iron Man uh, artwork. And that'll be coming up within about a week or two. All right. One thing I hope is really being uh, great for you guys during this time is that with, I know for me, I've been having to work a lot um, because I work at a camp and we're kind of down to skeleton crew with everything that's been going on with uh, the coronavirus and uh, furloughing and all kinds of stuff and the economy is doing all kinds of things. I have found that being able to lock in during my extra time, even though I don't have as much of it as I would like, um, art has really become therapy for me. So if you're somebody who has never been an artist, in your mind at least, um, but you've never really tried to get in there and draw, I really, really want to encourage you that this is a good time for you to draw. And even if you're not the best artist, it doesn't matter. Get in there. Uh, get some artwork in because it's therapeutic being able to focus on doing something else versus just uh, being focused on what's going on in the world and um, again art is therapy so I really want to encourage you guys to um, if you're somebody who's interested in art or you're just watching this to see okay how does this stuff get done man go ahead and have at it because Artwork is an amazing thing to be able to do and there's nothing better than at the end of you doing an artwork piece and you put your signature on it, you're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I did it. And it becomes something I feel is just therapy, not just for the person doing it, but for the person who gets a chance to enjoy your hard work that you've been able to do. So. Just want to put that disclaimer out there while I'm working on all these details and lines and lines and details and all this stuff that I'm doing here. Let me go down here and work on the brother's toe just a little bit more. Okay. 
Okay, so now I've been able to really give him a bit more detail and then what I want to do is go to the opacity or to the fill and just dial it back just a little bit. Wait, that was a little bit too much there. Just to dial it back a little bit so then it takes on a bit more of the green um, from the background. So what I'll do is I'll just set it at a good safe 75. Then go in, because now it's time to work on the pants for him. So what I'll do is go in, oops, go on in. And let me label that, we're going to call that lines, one, and since we'll be doing another layer, I'll label that one lines, two, and then go ahead and save. Alright, so now I'm going to go and dive on into his pants again. Okay. Okay. One of the tutorials that I am going to do um, probably in April is I had a viewer who asked me a really good question on how to actually scan the uh, drawings and stuff because this viewer is interested in doing a children's book and um, everybody starts at a different level when it comes down to designs and being able to understand how to move their artwork to different platforms. <clears throat> I will be doing a segment on that. And so I do want to say, Miss Queen Nelly, thank you for asking such a good formative question because if you got the question, many others may have the exact same. So please be tuning in for that if you would like to know a little bit of the education on how to get your artwork especially if you're going to be looking to print it in any kind of way there are certain things that are going to be important for you to have a clear 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 understanding on going into this all right so now i've done kind of my details to his pants i'm going to turn this down just a little bit maybe there so that's at about 82 i like 80 there we go so now our Hulk is really beginning to kind of make his appearance and one thing also that I'm thinking that I will do also just for those who want to know because whenever I've done my tutorials I show you how I'm doing the work and then magically it's in a background and everything I think I'm gonna do a tutorial also where I show you how to create your own backgrounds for stuff by blending images together, messing with color so you don't get in trouble for plagiarism. And then that way, essentially, you're able to make whatever background you want to make when it comes down to doing designs without you offending the original photographer or artist. So anyway, now I'm going to go ahead and switch back on over to the mouse itself. And um, I'm going to start to do some actual shadowing by using my brush tool and kind of setting in the tone of a lot more shadow base to our guy before. So let me see, I've already established the layer. I'm going to name that shadow. I'm going to change its property to being a multiplied layer. And then I'm going to go in and select an area here. And let me see, because I do want to make sure that this is going to work out well, I'll go ahead and knock down the size of the brush just a little bit, because right now it's at 180, so I'm going to knock it down to 105. 
and then go in and start to do some of my shadow. And so I'm working with his rib cage area. And I'm going to work with the front of his abdomen a little bit as well. Right, and then mess with this portion of his bicep a little bit. There we go. And what I'm doing is kind of looking for those areas that would kind of fall behind a different part of the body. Definitely up under his head is another place that I'm going to hit for his shadow. Maybe give a little bit of shadow to his elbow area, as well as to his forearm. The inside of his knuckles could stand to get some of it. Let's see here. Yeah, go in and hit that just a little bit as well. And again, as I've said before, it doesn't all have to be perfect. It just needs to look good. <laughs> now, I know some of you may be going, man, that's starting to look too dark. We have a simple little trick for something like that. So don't worry, I'm not going to leave you guys hanging. Okay, and then what I'll do before I mess with the shadowing for the rest of them. So as you see here, it's pretty darn dark. It doesn't look as good. All you have to do is go in and pull that opacity back. So then you just get regular old small shadows to All right. So now we'll go ahead and work on the other portions of his body for shadowing purposes and we'll go ahead and work with the guy's feet and calves so i'm going to make another layer make that a shadow as the title for it turn its properties to multiply then i will go in with my brush and follow along the lining of his pants. And then mess with a little bit of shadowing here to edge off his foot a little bit. Kind of darken him at the toes a little bit. Ankle. That's a little bit too much. And then do the same thing on this side. Shadow a bit. And then I need just a little bit more of his calf to work with. There we go. So then go back to that layer and then airbrush a little bit more of that. So then now you're getting the depth to how his actual pants are falling into place as far as his calves and everything are concerned. Then, the next thing we'll do is go in and add some shadowing to his actual pants area. So, go ahead, create that layer, label that shadow as well, select his pants with your magic wand tool, get that right in the middle as well, perfect, then go on in and go on to that shadow layer make sure that your properties are set to multiply so you get a good dark now i can increase the brush size just a tad bit you don't want to go overwhelming but just enough so that there's a nice flow to it and so now we're getting a little bit of difference on how big that's following through i can darken that in now give him a lot more depth because those arms are in front of him.
Yeah, see, there you go. Now we've got the hook kind of all the way in full fledge. Uh, one thing that I am going to do here is just turn this down just a little bit more. All right, so now we've got the hook kind of coming together. I'm gonna leave this face a little bit bright. Um, I think that'll be kind of a good benefit to what we're doing here. And then I want to mess with this back layer that I was using as my form of template uh, so that these lines become a lot more dark. So I can mess with that a little bit more on the output level, but then go in and really make his lines of detail black for the most part. See, so when I had it up higher, it was kind of thinned out. Now I've made them a lot darker, which gives me a lot more detail to him. And what I'm going to do is go in and manipulate my lines just a little bit more so the lines in his legs look good now that this is starting to form out a little bit more now I can bring that opacity all the way back up for the multiplied uh, lines on him and then you can also because again this comes down to preference you can mess with the properties of it to sit there and go okay well let me kind of mess around and you see how it's all changing and kind of manipulating itself to a certain extent you're able to do that and you'll never know what kind of cool stuff you're going to get out of adding uh, different things to it but that was just me kind of getting sidetracked but let me go ahead and uh, keep going with this so now we've got the Hulk looking pretty darn Hulk-ish if you ask me but I want to just give his chin just a little bit more depth. So I'm going to go in, select his body again, and create another shadow layer. Changing that opacity to the, or not the uh, opacity, but the properties of it to make it a multiplied layer. And then, there we go. Now, the one place that I would suggest doing something a little bit different on would be his mouth portion because the depth of his mouth is going to be pretty darn key. So we'll leave the tongue alone, but we'll mess with the inner as well as the back of his throat. And then go on up here, create another shadow layer, select our brush, change its properties to multiply, and then, so then I'll go in, put a little bit more depth to his mouth there. See, so now he has really, really, really started to form rather nicely. And then, so the last thing that or one of the last steps that I like to do is go on in, select my template layer, bring that to the top, make that completely all black or all white, it really doesn't matter, but make it all black, turn the fill all the way down, then go into the actual effects itself and play with the bevel on him. And mess around with him to see what really gives you what you're looking for. Soften that up a bit. Turned up the darkness quite a bit. There we go. And as you guys can see, it's changing as I'm messing around with this a bit. Let 
and then I'm actually going to change his highlight to kind of a green where you can really see it if I turn it up as you see right there but as you can see he's really come together nicely now save 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 <laughs> and then I'm going to increase his overall stroke on his template and see what that looks like And there we go. We've got our Hulk there. I hope that you guys uh, have enjoyed being able to see this tutorial and you're able to apply this really and truly to any kind of artwork that you have taken, drawn, and you would like to scan and kind of bring it to life. And um, I just really want to thank you guys for joining me. I, I really appreciate you guys being a part of this channel and enjoying the different bits of artwork that I've been able to present to you and as I told you before this is just the beginning I've got a lot more stuff to be able to do and so thank you guys so much for joining me make sure you subscribe hit that bell uh, so that you can get those notifications because there's a lot more fun in store so you guys have a wonderful day and I'll see you guys next week bye bye <music>